The Hubble Space Telescope is back in operation, but its end is only delayed. Remember to June 13th when the Hubble Space Telescope gave the astronomical community a fright when its payload computers suddenly stopped working? This prompted the main computer to put the telescope and its scientific instruments into safe mode. What followed was many tense weeks as the operations team for the HST tried to figure out what the source of the problem was and come up with a strategy for turning Hubble back on. On Friday, July 17th, after more than a month of checking, rechecking, and attempted restarts, the operations team for Hubble identified the root of the problem and restored power to the telescope's hardware and all of its instruments. Science operations can now resume, and the pioneering space telescope that gave us over 30 years of dedicated astronomy, cosmology, and astrophysics still has some life in her. The problems began when an unspecified issue caused Hubble's payload computer to stop working. As part of the telescope's Science Instrument Command and Data Handling Module, the purpose of this computer is to control and coordinate the scientific instruments aboard the spacecraft. As a result, the main computer stopped receiving the Keep Alive signal from the payload computer and automatically placed all of Hubble's scientific instruments into a safe mode. The next day, the team restarted the payload computer, but it stopped again. That's when the operations team began attempting to switch over to backup modules, but without success. However, by July 14th, the team announced that these tests allowed them to gather vital information that indicated the cause of the problem was in the power control unit. This unit ensures a steady voltage supply to the payload computer and its memory. It also contains a power regulator that maintains a constant supply of 5 volts and a secondary protection unit that warns the payload computer if the voltage exceeds or falls below this level. This will trip the secondary protection unit, which will then instruct the payload computer to cease operations. The team's analysis suggested that either the secondary circuit was tripped or that degradation over time caused it to get stuck in this inhibit state. On July 15th, the team then began the process of switching over to the unit's backup, which also contains the backup power control unit. Once that was done, the backup payload computer was turned on, loaded with flight software, and brought up to normal operations mode. So, to the delight and relief of hundreds of scientists and millions of enthusiasts, by July 17th, Hubble's scientific instruments were returned to operational status, and NASA announced that the collection of science data will now resume. This affection for the old telescope is also understandable. For anyone whose formative years coincided with the 1990s, the name Hubble has been synonymous with astronomy and scientific discovery. In the 31 years that it has been in operation, Hubble has conducted over 1.5 million observations of the universe, over 18,000 scientific papers have been published with its data, and it has contributed to some of the most significant discoveries of our universe. These include operations that prove the universe is expanding at an accelerated rate, which gave to the theory of dark energy. Its observation campaigns like the Deep Field and Ultra Deep Field provided new insight into the evolution of galaxies and hints about the role dark matter played. Its observations of exoplanets have also led to the first atmospheric studies of planets beyond the solar system. What would you say if to celebrate the good news we retraced together the most glorious stages and the darkest moments of this great scientific machine? Let's start, okay? Hey guys, we just created a Patreon page with which we're going to be offering the chance to have more connection with us and be part of our squad. You'll get your name and description, patron-only posts and messages, chat community, Discord role access, exclusive right to vote for next videos. Be part of the Insane Curiosity team so we can improve the quality of our content we offer you. Check our Patreon page here at the link below in the description or in the Insane Curiosity homepage on the top right. The launch of Hubble into Earth orbit was hailed as the solution to a problem that has always plagued astronomers – atmospheric distortion, the interference of turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere that disturbs the view of Earth-based observations, the same reason why when we look at stars from Earth they seem to pulsate. Modern ground-based telescopes have overcome this problem with adaptive mirrors that used controlled deformation to compensate for atmospheric turbulence, returning a sharp image of distant light sources. 
but there's no way for observers stuck on our planet to investigate the wavelengths, such as ultraviolet, gamma rays, and X-rays blocked or absorbed by the atmosphere. The most effective solution is to go beyond this barrier. Better yet, send a space telescope 569 kilometers above Earth's surface. April 24, 1990, Space Shuttle Discovery launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, carrying five astronauts and the Hubble Space Telescope. April 25, 1990, Hubble was deployed from the Space Shuttle Discovery. The Canadian-built remote manipulator system arm, controlled from inside the shuttle cabin by the astronaut crew members, held Hubble above the cargo bay during pre-deployment procedures, which included the extension of solar array panels and antenna before releasing the telescope into space. May 20, 1990 The first light image from Hubble was taken with the wide field and planetary camera to assist in focusing the telescope. The image illustrated Hubble's improved resolution compared to ground-based observatories, showing that its images were roughly 50% sharper than ground-based images. But among the experts, there is much disappointment. June 27, 1990 NASA announced that Hubble's primary mirror had an imperfection called spherical aberration, which affected the clarity of the telescope's images. The curvature of the mirror was off by 2 microns, or 1 50th the width of a human hair, making images slightly blurry. December 2nd to 13th, 1993 Hubble's first servicing mission occurred aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour with seven astronauts on board. The primary mission was to install the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2, a new camera that provided internal corrections for the spherical aberration in Hubble's primary mirror. The second instrument was the Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement, which corrected the spherical aberration for the other existing instruments. Following the success of the mission, observations from the Hubble Space Telescope were no longer blurry. January 13, 1994 NASA announced that the new optics installed on Hubble during its first servicing mission successfully corrected the primary mirror's spherical aberration problem, making Hubble's observations crisp and clear. January 14, 1994 Hubble observed the star Eta Carinae with the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2. Eta Carinae is a highly unstable star prone to violent outbursts that is 4 million times brighter and 150 times more massive than our Sun. It resides over 10,000 light years away. May 25, 1994 Astronomers reported that Hubble observations confirmed the existence of supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies. Astronomers had looked at the giant elliptical galaxy M87, located 50 million light years away from Earth, and found evidence that supported the existence of a gravitationally collapsed object with rapid rotation at its core. July 16, 23, 1994 Fragments of the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 began to impact Jupiter. For the next several days, Hubble observed the remaining fragments from the comet crashing into Jupiter's atmosphere and leaving visible, bruise-like marks in the planet's atmosphere. This was the first time astronomers had witnessed the collision of two astronomical objects. November 8, 1994 Scientists using Hubble announced that they had produced the first ever images of surface features on Saturn's moon Titan. Larger than Mercury, but smaller than Mars, Titan has an atmosphere about four times as dense as Earth's atmosphere, with nitrogen being its primary component. November 2, 1995 Hubble's iconic image of towering columns of gas and dust in the Eagle Nebula, Messier 16, was released to the world. The image, nicknamed the Pillars of Creation, shows newborn stars emerging from dense pockets of interstellar gas. January 15, 1996 Astronomers released the Hubble Deep Field Image, the deepest and most detailed view of the universe at the time. Consisting of 342 separate exposures taken with the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2 over 10 consecutive days in December of 1995. The image contains at least 1,500 galaxies at various stages of development. The image represented a small portion of the sky roughly the size of a dime seen from 23 meters away. March 7, 1996 Astronomers published Hubble's images of Pluto, which reveal details on the dwarf planet's surface for the first time. Hubble's observations showed brightness variations on the surface, 
that could be topographic features such as basins or impact craters. Hang on a sec before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you will help us to make products of even higher quality. February 11, 21st, 1997 A seven-member astronaut crew aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery performed the second servicing mission for Hubble. The goals of servicing mission 2 included the installation of the near-infrared camera and multi-object spectrometer and the space telescope imaging spectrograph. May 12, 1997 The first observations made following Hubble's successful second servicing mission were released. The observations included images of the Ag Nebula and the heart of the Orion Nebula, as well as spectrographic images of a ring around supernova 1987A and a supermassive black hole. June 19, 1997 Astronomers announced that Hubble had observed a 400-kilometer high plume of gas and dust from a volcanic eruption on Jupiter's innermost moon, Io. Scientists estimated that the material must have been ejected from the volcano at more than 3,000 kilometers per hour. At the time, it was the largest plume yet seen on Io. September 1998 Astronomers using Hubble published the first evidence that the expansion of the universe is not slowing down as expected, but accelerating. The results were based on distance measurements to supernovae located so far away that they allowed astronomers to determine the expansion rate of the universe. January 6, 1999 Hubble released this image of the Ring Nebula, which was discovered by French astronomer Charles Messier over 200 years ago and catalogued as Messier 57. This planetary nebula, so named because it resembles a round planet in small telescopes, is a cylinder of gas seen almost end-on, produced by a dying star shedding its outer layers. November 13, 1999 Hubble was put into safe mode after the failure of a fourth gyroscope. Hubble had six gyroscopes on board but needed a minimum of three to accurately point and take observations. In safe mode, the spacecraft maintains its health and safety by pointing its solar panels toward the sun and turning its antennas to allow for communications, but it does not make any new scientific observations. December 19, 27, 1999 Hubble's third servicing mission aboard Shuttle Discovery the primary goals of seven astronauts were to restore Hubble to working order and upgrade its systems. Astronauts installed a new computer as well as all new gyroscopes. Then Hubble successfully began operations and observations once again. April 26, 2001 Astronomers released pictures from Hubble that provided the first direct visual evidence of planetary building blocks within dusty disks around young stars. The protoplanetary disks are located in the Orion Nebula, approximately 1,500 light-years from Earth. November 27, 2001 Astronomers announced that Hubble had made the first direct measurement of an exoplanet's atmosphere. Hubble detected sodium in the atmosphere of a planet orbiting a sun-like star 150 light-years away called HD 209458. March 1 to 12, 2002 Aboard Space Shuttle Columbia, seven astronauts embarked on Hubble's fourth servicing mission. For the first time since Hubble was launched, the telescope was powered down by controllers on the ground to change out the power control unit, which manages the power for the spacecraft. The advanced camera for surveys and new solar panels were also installed on Hubble. April 30, 2002 Early release observations taken by Hubble's newly installed advanced camera for surveys were published. Some of the images are now Hubble classics, showing objects such as the Cone Nebula, Mice Galaxies, and Tadpole Galaxy. March 26, 2003 Astronomers released Hubble images of a light echo around a star called V838 Monocerotis, which in January 2002 had suddenly swelled in brightness, giving off 600,000 times more light than our sun does. Hubble's images showed light from this outburst illuminating clouds of dust around the star as the light traveled outward. March 9, 2004 The Hubble Ultra Deep Field Observation was released showing 10,000 galaxies in a tiny section of the sky. Made from a series of exposures that add up to a million seconds of observation time, the image was the deepest portrait of the universe yet taken and revealed some of the first galaxies dating back to the period 
shortly after the Big Bang. October 31, 2005 Astronomers released discovery images from Hubble showing two previously unseen moons orbiting the dwarf planet Pluto. The discovery of the small moons provided insight into the nature and evolution of the Pluto system and early Kuiper Belt, a region of icy and rocky bodies beyond Neptune. Hubble would go on to discover a total of four moons around Pluto. April 18 to 20, 2006 Hubble observed the disintegration of comet 73P Schwassmann Washman 3 as it approached the Sun. The observations provided a new opportunity to study the breakup of a comet nucleus. March 19, 2008 Hubble astronomers announced their discovery of methane in the atmosphere of an exoplanet found on a Jupiter sized planet named HD 189733b. This was the first organic molecule identified in the atmosphere of a planet orbiting a star other than the Sun. August 11, 2008 Hubble completed its 100,000th orbit in space. It took a little over 18 years for the telescope to achieve this many orbits. To commemorate this milestone, Hubble imaged a star-forming nebula in a nearby galaxy called the Large Magellanic Cloud. May 11 to 24, 2009 Astronauts aboard Shuttle Atlantis completed the fifth and final servicing mission for Hubble. Mission highlights included the installation of the Wide Field Camera 3 and Cosmic Origin Spectrograph, as well as the first ever in space repair of science instruments, the Advanced Camera for Surveys, and the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph. The crew also replaced batteries, gyroscopes, and other hardware so that Hubble would continue to operate for many years to come. September 9, 2009 Several images taken with the newly installed Wide Field Camera 3 and other new or repaired Hubble instruments were shared with the world. Some of the objects featured were the Butterfly Nebula, Stefan's Quintet, and the core of the densely packed star cluster Omega Centauri. The new instruments installed during the servicing mission are more sensitive to light than earlier instruments and improved Hubble's observing efficiency significantly. July 11, 2012 Astronomers using Hubble announced their discovery of a fifth moon orbiting the dwarf planet Pluto. Estimated to be irregular in shape and just 10 to 22 kilometers across, the newfound moon orbits in the same plane as the other satellites in the system. Hubble discovered four of the five known moons of Pluto in preparation for the New Horizons spacecraft flyby in 2015. April 19, 2013 an infrared image of the Horsehead Nebula from Hubble was released to celebrate the telescope's 23rd anniversary in space. The nebula is a small part of the vast star-forming complex in the constellation Orion and is expected to disintegrate in about 5 million years. November 7, 2013 Astronomers released Hubble images of a unique, never-before-seen type of object, an asteroid that sprouted six comet-like tails. December 12, 2013 Astronomers announced that Hubble had observed water vapor plumes rising above the frigid south polar region of Jupiter's moon Europa. The observations provided the first strong evidence of water plumes erupting off the moon's surface. January 7, 2014 The first of Hubble's Frontier Fields images was released, featuring the galaxy cluster Abel 2744. The Frontier Fields multi-year program obtained super-deep views of the universe using long exposures from Hubble. This image of Abel 2744 was the deepest ever picture taken of a cluster of galaxies and revealed some of the faintest and youngest galaxies yet detected. March 6, 2014 Hubble observations were released showing the never-before-seen breakup of an asteroid. A series of Hubble images taken over months revealed that the asteroid called P2013R3 had broken into as many as 10 smaller pieces and was continuing to break apart. The images also showed that the fragments were drifting away from each other at a mere 1.5 kilometers per hour, suggesting that the collision was unlikely to be the cause of the breakup. May 15, 2014 Scientists released Hubble images showing that Jupiter's great red spot is smaller than ever before, signifying that the giant storm is shrinking. Hubble's observations also revealed that the spot is changing shape from an oval to a circle. January 5, 2015 New Hubble images of the iconic Pillars of Creation in the Eagle Nebula 
were released to the public. Hubble made its first observations of these star-forming pillars in 1995. The newest images provided a more detailed visible light view of the pillars and presented an infrared view, which revealed stars hidden within and behind the towers of gas and dust. April 26, 2016 Scientists announced that they had used Hubble to discover a small, dark moon orbiting Makemake, the second brightest icy dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt after Pluto. The observations showed that the moon orbits approximately 21,000 kilometers from Makemake. The moon's discovery provided valuable information on the dwarf planet system, such as the mass for the system and insight into its evolution. October 16, 2017 Scientists presented Hubble images showing light from a source of gravitational waves. The gravitational waves were produced when two neutron stars merged in the galaxy NGC 4993 located about 130 million light-years from Earth. Hubble, along with many other space and ground-based telescopes, observed the resulting Kilo Nova after the gravitational waves were detected. It was the first time light from a source of gravitational waves had ever been detected. June 27, 2018 Results from Hubble observations of Oumuamua, the first known interstellar object to pass through our solar system, were announced. Hubble, along with other space and ground-based telescopes, measured the object's trajectory and found that it gained an unexpected boost of speed. A possible explanation is that Oumuamua expelled gaseous material like a comet which influenced its path. October 3, 2018 Astronomers announced that the Kepler and Hubble Space Telescopes had gathered evidence of a possible moon orbiting a planet outside our solar system, potentially as large as Neptune. The suspected exomoon accompanies a planet several times more massive than Jupiter called Kepler 1625b, which orbits a sun-like star 8,000 light-years from Earth. September 13, 2019 Astronomers presented the first detection of water vapor in the atmosphere of an exoplanet orbiting within its star's habitable zone, where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. Hubble detected water vapor in the atmosphere of a planet called K218b, which orbits a small red dwarf star about 110 light-years away. To be continued. Okay, that's in the past, but there still is a question to answer. How long can Hubble exist in the future? According to recent reports, the operational life of Hubble has been extended until at least 2025. The reasons are different and it is cited that the subsystems and the main instrumentation should have a reliability of more than 80% for another five years. Unfortunately, even if there will be no failures of some kind not repairable at a distance, the fate of the space telescope will be marked by its orbital instability. Hubble in fact orbits the Earth in an extremely tenuous upper atmosphere, and over time its orbit decays due to drag. If not reboosted, it will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere within some decades with the exact date depending on how active the sun is and its impact on the upper atmosphere. And it seems that this will happen after 2030, after which the telescope will gradually lose altitude and then disintegrate. NASA's original plan for safely deorbiting Hubble was to retrieve it using a space shuttle. Hubble would then have most likely been displayed in the Smithsonian Institution. This is no longer possible since the space shuttle fleet has been retired and would have been unlikely in any case due to the cost of the mission and risk to the crew. So it will really be a heartbreak the day we see Hubble burning up in the sky like a meteor.